Hey guys, I know what you're thinking right now. Uh-oh, MTG Lion is going to throw a fit over Commander because he doesn't like Commander and blah blah blah. No, I've always loved Commander uh, in terms of the Commander 2020 deck. Yeah, it's a buy. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a really good product. I've looked at the cards. I've done the math. I've done the calculations, the diversity, as well as the quote, money of these cards are pretty good. Now, how are the actual decks? I don't know. That, I guess I'll leave another YouTube channel to figure out. But I do love these cards. I do love Commanders because it's a basically a bunch of rares and uncommons and even mythics together for a very affordable price. And they generally have the value. It's guaranteed value. And that's why I like in a Magic the Gathering product. Yes, there's no mystery product, right? But when the mystery product is Pharos Beyond Death and the expected value for a standard booster box is about 25 buy list or even 20 buy list, I'll pass. Hard pass for me. And let me talk a little bit more about Commander in general. And why I don't feel like Commander. So I'm betting heavy on Commander. A lot of you are confused as to like what I'm doing. I tried to explain it to you multiple times. But it's still. I guess I need to explain it in the simplest terms. Commander good. Everything else bad. For Paper Magic. The reason that I think Commander will still exist as a Paper Magic format when, let's say, Pioneer or Modern even would not exist is because MTG Arena. So I have, even though the Magic the Gathering Arena developers are very poor, they're not great developers, they're not great coders, as seen by what they're currently doing, or even look at Magic Online, I know it's hopefully a different team, but I'm sure that once Magic Online, they're going to try to transition some of those coders who have done a horrific job, a terrible, terrible job for many years, for decades, for a decade plus. I would not let them touch MTG Arena. I just would. I would puke. I would puke if somehow they transitioned over to MTG Arena. Now, many of you may ask the question, why would Commander Paper Magic be different? I just explained it to you. It's the fact that I don't think they have developers smart enough to code every single Magic card. Now, you said, oh, they did it on Magic Online. Yes, that is true. But see how many bugs they have. See how many just... Uh, I remember there was one bug that just destroyed your personal computer because it just kept downloading itself. And it was like something like 10 gigabytes of like memory just to play him Magic Online. It was like a cache bug. Do you really think that the MTG coders, based on everything we know about them, have the talent to code every single Magic card and think about every Magic interaction? And would you even want to if you're MTG Arena, right? Because if you're MTG Arena, your new cards have to interact with every card in your database. Now, if your database is 20, 30,000 magic cards, that's hard to manage. But if your database is just, let's say, modern, up to modern, hey, that's not too bad. I'm sure that even they could manage that. Commander will always be a paper product. I have no doubt in my mind that will be true for the next 10 years. Now, should they really invest in MTG Arena? MTG Arena actually become an eSport? I don't know. Maybe they code every card in. But again, I'm really not expecting them to do that because why would they want to? Like, There's no incentive for them to do that. They keep MTG Arena standard draft pioneer modern there's no and then they have their own edh brawl format which they can implement edh remember was not invented by magic the gathering by wizards of the coast sorry edh was invented by a bunch of dudes who liked magic the gathering 
And that's why it's the greatest format, because Wizards of the Coast, even though they have taken advantage of ED8s, of course, had nothing to do with its conception. They would have never in a million years came up with something like this, because only a player could come up with this. Only a player base can come up with this. And that's what it is. You may not remember this, because you're probably a young un, but there used to be magic formats called Emperor, and there used to be a assassin format. So the emperor format would be, you have your two generals on your side and the two generals have to fight the other two generals. There's no like intersecting and the person in the middle is gonna build up and build up. And then let's say my general beats your general, then my general can attack the emperor. And I remember playing that and I thought that was the best format. And there was another format called assassin where you put everyone's name in a piece of paper and then you get points for assassinating your target. So then you would pick a random name. Let's say I picked Matt, and then if I, my job is to assassinate Matt, but also my name is on that piece of paper, so someone has to assassinate me. And then you would, and then whoever is remaining would win. So we're talking about a lot of really different formats that in my childhood was incredibly fun. And honestly, even more fun than ED8s. Um, there was also the bidding on people's decks. We can't do that anymore because people steal magic cards given how valuable they are. But it used to be really fun to play like, you know, a deck. And if you didn't have a lot of money or you didn't have a lot of magic cards, this would be a perfect way for you to play a more expensive deck. Because you could bid more life or cards. So we'd oh, the cards would go first, and then if we both bid five cards, then we can bid life, and we'll see whoever wins that deck. And part of the fun was the auction itself to see how much your deck was worth, right? right? And some people would bid on their own decks, of course, and so on. But there were so many great formats when I was a child in Magic the Gathering. I, I'm remembering this very fondly, and Commander is one of them. Um, Commander was a format that I played and there was no way I could have concluded that foil cards would be valuable. Like this is like, this was tabletop magic, which means it was played without sleeves when I first played EDHs. I remember uh, there was a friend of mine in Richmond, Virginia. I was first introduced to it in law school. There's a friend of mine in Richmond, Virginia. I remember a JST Mind Scope there and you know, should you play it in the deck? I remember the big controversy about JST Mind Sculptor because he was in standard at the time. And it was a lot of fun. I had the most fun I've ever had. I, we had friends and we actually had a African-American female player who was the wife or the fiance of a dude player. And that was my first female player I've ever interacted with and she was great. And it was a great time because EDH was, it brought so many different people. And then once I returned from Richmond, so Richmond was where I did my intern. Once I went back, I had even more fun because there was a local game store and they, all we would do is play ED8s. And uh, it was fun. I, you know, ED8s has always been this really crazy format to me because I, one of my favorite commanders, uh, I'm even embarrassed to tell you this, is Selena, Dark Angel. And I love Selena so very much. And, you know, it was the only format I could really play her in. And, yeah. So that's what happened. And that's why Commander 2020 and investing in Commander and buying. So the price point is right. It's not too expensive. It has a lot of playability. You can buy this and then you can play against your opponent or whatever you want to do uh, on that. It's a lot of fun. This is what makes sense to me. So if you're going to pay $30, which you can buy online, $30, you get a lot of value from what you're getting as opposed to a box of Pharaohs Beyond Death. I don't know what any value people, I mean, I don't know why people are still opening it because there's no f and to go to. EDH, you can play, you can teach someone. Um, I think people said that Ikoria would be a good, no, Ikoria is going to be a terrible set to teach people. Commander is a awesome set. I have never disliked any Commander seal product. Now, do I wish some of the Commander things were a little bit better than other ones? Yeah, I, I think the value should be more spread out evenly. 
but uh, Commander for the price point is the best value and I have no concern over Paper Magic for Commander just because of how complicated it would be. Just insanely difficult for someone, for them to duplicate this online. Plus like, I mean, just look at them. I mean, there was like this picture of all the developers and you could really tell, you absolutely could tell that these people don't have, you know, are not the top tier developers, right? So, yeah, there you go. Buy it. I think it's a buy. I love it. I think it's a great product. I, I've watched these cards being spoiled. And Commander Spear was definitely a nice one. I thought that was very nice. Um, so that was an expensive common. Common, right? When it's only available in, I think, the Broad decks. Hi, guys.